Um, Ruth, you um, referenced the fact that, uh, and I think Maria as well, the fact that human rights can seem like something that happens elsewhere and, and is a concern for other people in other countries. Um, but I just wanted to reference a couple of, of, of issues that, that, are, that are very domestic, uh, one of which is um, internet surveillance uh, and the so-called Snoopers Charter, uh, which Theresa May and others seem absolutely uh, set on. And, and um, the refrain that we get uh, and the politicians against it get uh, put back to them when they question ministers is, oh, well, if you've got nothing to hide, what is the problem? As if that is okay for them to therefore snoop on, on, on every single uh, thing that any of us do over the, the, the internet. Uh, and also we had a um, situation in, I'm a trustee at the LGBT centre here in Leicester, and we had um, a, an issue of um, a gentleman who had fled to Britain, uh, I, think, I think it was from Uganda, um, for asylum, um, who was a gay gentleman, and he was, uh, who was told by you know, Theresa May in the, in the Home Office that for him to be able to stay in Britain, that he would have to prove he was gay. Um, and uh, so, you know, what, what I guess the question I'm asking is, is, you know, is certainly no time for us to be in any way kind of moral or, or, or pious on this matter when we have these and other issues uh, going on at home. I mean, Ed, do you want to start? Well, Jack, the whole issue of, of uh, immigration appeals, um, it's not happy language, but the joke, it's a rather unpleasant joke, and, and it occurs in about 50% of cases where extradition is recommended for LGBT claimants, is the only way you can prove your homosexuality, and I apologise for the language, is to fuck the judge. <laughs> um, and, and people are literally required to demonstrate their sexuality. Um, and there is a industry, dark undercover industry, of evidencing weddings, uh, and uh, I, I wouldn't know where to start in terms of articulating that, but the evidence uh, the support groups are having to put forward uh, is hideous. Uh, yeah, the only thing I say, on a lighter note, just to try and pick that up a little bit, um, we, we, have a, we export good ideas, we just sometimes don't take them for ourselves. So, I, I'm pretty sure it was Conrad Adenauer who said, you English are so generous, you gave us a federal written constitution, you gave us free compulsory education, and you gave us a devolved system of government, you took none of them for yourselves. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know what it is about our, our culture, but you know, the human rights is a good thing, inclusion is a good thing, equality is a good thing, and yet we drive ourselves down a minimalist state that drives these things out. And I don't. I don't understand that generosity of giving with that reluctance to enjoy. Do you, do you know why we do that? Um, I don't know why we do it, but I mean, um, I, think, I think it's inevitably human rights come under more pressure at times yeah. like this when there's such fear of terrorism and so forth, mm. and, and that makes it much easier, I think, for those who want to reduce civil rights and political rights so it might be um, not just things like internet surveillance, but like, I mean, in Paris, the right to demonstrate was taken away around the, um, the climate summit. Um, and so, I mean, ways like that can so easily infringe. And it, it's quite difficult to, for people to stand up and speak against it when people are feeling frightened um, you know, after what happened in Paris. But I think the only other thing I'd say about kind of rights at home is it, I think it's quite to try and show how it's actually about what happens in the everyday and, and the uh, Equality and Human Rights Council a few years ago did a very good report about sort of the culture of human rights in organisations and how it can change. So it's like every, most people have some kind of relationship with the state be it through the health service, or education, or social services, or whatever. And if there's a culture of human rights, then it's much more likely that people are treated decently and with respect. But they don't think of that as being what human rights is about. And I think if you can kind of remind people that human rights isn't just about 
you know, ab as, you, as Maria said about the abstract. It's not just about, you know, people going to lawyers, and, and it's not just kind of individualistic, but actually it is about a culture and about how we treat each other and how the state, through professionals or officials, treat people when they engage with the state. Um, and my fear is that if we lose the Human Rights Act, then that could go with it, even if you know there's a Bill of Rights, but it may not have that same emphasis on, on um, uh, sort of equality and human rights throughout. Maria, you, you lecture in media and communication. I mean, I mean, have you had any kind of discussion with your students at the University of Leicester in regards to the, 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 the growing sense that the government want to look into all of our yeah. kind of personal communications? And, and, or do you have a personal view on that in terms of uh, that infringement on our... I actually our, wanted to answer the discussion about the asylum. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, <laughs> Answer whichever question you want to ask. I'll get on to that one. Okay. I just wanted to follow up. I was just going to. Um, it's interesting you mentioned asylum, the asylum seekers needing to prove that they were gay. The reason why I wanted to talk about this is precisely the media do not talk about this. And uh, one of them, uh, I interviewed a, a young playwright called Zodwa Nioni in, in my research. Uh, she's based in Leeds. And she, she wrote this play called Dying Lives, which uh, has been to Leicester and has toured the country. And she was a playwright in residence at the West, West Yorkshire Playhouse, which was precisely um, a play that she wrote when she met an asylum uh, seeker that she knew from Leeds when she went on holiday to Zimbabwe and they had been deported. And she was so appalled by the situation that she went to do all this research and she was telling me, Maria, you can't imagine what these people have to do to prove that they are gay. Yeah. And she was horrified and she says, there's no debate about this. So that was her motivation. So this connects to my idea that the arts sometimes can generate these alternative spaces of debate. And of course, only people who go and watch the play and those audiences who discuss the play. Yeah. But at least there's a space, there's not a silence around this issue. So that's all I wanted to say. About the surveillance, no, I haven't had any discussion about that with my students. Do you have a personal view on that? I mean, about internet surveillance and, yeah, the, and, and the relationship with the human rights. Well, in as much as you know, uh, infringement on a right to privacy, as much as as much as as much as anything else. It's, so. not, it's not something I have been concerned with, but it's, it's certainly something that um, we we should think more about because, well, the right to to privacy is, is basic, basically being scrapped if we've got internet surveillance of the kind we have in this country. And I'm not sure if it is still the case, but I think the UK is still the country with more CCTV cameras in the world. Yeah. Yeah. So that says something about this country and where we live. But it's not something I've been so much concerned with. I'm more concerned with migrants and that's refugee fine. issues. Okay, <laughs> so no, that's it's not fine. something I have a lot to offer. No, no, that's fine.